I have with me Mr. Yon Witherstrom, Chairman and Managing Director of SAB India Technologies. Yon, thank you for joining us on Bloomberg Quint. To begin with, uh, I just start off with the new uh, RFI which has come in for the 110 aircrafts and I understand that SAB would be a, a contender for that. Yes, that's correct. We are uh, glad to see that the, uh, the process has started and we uh, just received it. So we are in the middle of analyzing and reading and uh, really looking forward to respond to the Indian Air Force. Uh, you will be uh, partnering with uh, an Indian partner, Adani, in this, right? Yes, we, uh, as we said before here, we, uh, we are looking at building a partnership with uh, Adani, and, but of course we also need to look at the, uh, the overall requirements and how the SP process is evolving. So uh, currently we are, we are looking forward to the process and we will monitor how that is going along. Uh, you know, you're part of the last uh, MMRCA project as well, where you uh, bid as well. Uh, how do you see this process being different from the last one? Uh, again, it's just an RFI, uh, so we we don't know that. So, um, but of course, we've read the uh, Chapter Seven of the uh, DDP and the SP and so on. So, if we assume that they're going to go ahead with the SP process, it's going to be a different process because the MMRCA was different. Uh, that was more of a uh, by global with the uh, uh, directed TOT to uh, um, DPSU being HO. Mm -hmm. And uh, but again. The RFI doesn't clearly give us all those answers, so we, we are looking forward to the next step and looking forward to uh, the progress of, of defining exactly what the, uh, the, the end process will be. Well, we had the Prime Minister today talking about this project as well, saying that you know we wouldn't be taking 10 years uh, like the previous government took. Uh, it would be a shorter process of shortlisting and taking forward. Are you optimistic with the kind of uh, progress uh, that you're seeing on the RFI front and then uh, the feedback which you're getting from your counterparts uh, or the, uh, the ministry uh, officials? Yes, I mean, I'm very well aware of, uh, we are uh, aware of the fact that uh, uh, there's a strong need from the Indian Air Force. They need numbers, they need fighters in the air, and I think we can provide the best solution. With the superior availability and technology that we are offering with the Group E, the Air Force will definitely have fighters in the air where they belong. Um, and I'm encouraged by the Honourable Prime Minister's statement saying that he's going to go ahead and they're going to push now for the procurement of the 110 fighters. So yes, I would say I, I'm really encouraged by that statement. Uh, you know, have you started uh, the process of meeting sub-system vendors and contractors for the entire project? Yes, I mean that's a, that's a process that we are working constantly on and as we are offering the full width from submarines to fighters and uh, in that process we have been doing for the last I would say 10-15 years we have uh, had a close relationship with the Indian ecosystem we are part of developing the Indian ecosystem. We are sourcing from India as we speak. We only talked about the Bishorat system where we already have started to source from India to supply uh, to other customers on the globe regarding that system. Uh, as far as your partnership with Adani is concerned, uh, the, it's a joint venture, I understand. Uh, uh, how, how is it going and how much uh, of capital will you be putting in once uh, this deal goes through? Again, I couldn't comment on that because we don't know uh, how this will end. But uh, so far, I'm very happy with the cooperation. We uh, jointly are looking into this now, and we have to see where the process ends before we can do any statement on what, where this is going to end. You have offered transfer of technology as well as uh, assembly in India of Gripen E. Uh, you know, you uh, you have your competitor Lockheed Martin also saying the same thing that transfer of technology and make in India for that. Uh, aside of that, uh, you know, what else is a stronger uh, thing which Gripen has, which uh, you know the F-16s don't have? I mean, when we talk about the technology transfer, it's not just technology transfer. We are offering a lot more than just moving a uh, second-hand uh, production line uh, from Sweden to India. We are offering to set up the world's most modern aircraft uh, capability in India 
developing the ecosystem, not just for today, but also for tomorrow. We, we are offering capabilities to India, not just technologies. And that's a big difference there. The capability to take Indian aerospace to the next generation. We're offering the, our support to India's next generation fighters. And the INAC, the Saab, uh, Indian aerospace facility will have these capabilities. So, irrespective of whether uh, the transfer of the, uh, the order goes to or not, will you be going ahead of uh, bringing that capability into India and making India one of the uh, export hubs for Gripen going forward? Is that one of the uh, things which you are, uh, which you have in mind? Investments, the basics for investments is ROI, re return on your investment. And building up a, uh, a new aerospace ecosystem, that's a uh, heavy investment, I would say. So, of course, we are dependent on, on, the, uh, on the order intake in that perspective. But regardless of the Gripen program and the, uh, the current, uh, currently issued RFI, we're already building up our footprint and our capabilities based on all the, the rest of our uh, offer to India, including, uh, again, the ground combat systems, air defense systems. We have our R&D center in Hyderabad, which is a big success, and we're growing that as well. So big portions of we, what we're now offering in, uh, in terms of Gripen E, in terms of uh, our submarines, is actually developed in India by Indian engineers. So that's something that we will do regardless. You spend. Uh, you told us that you know 20 to 25 percent of your revenues is spent in R&D. Yeah. Uh, uh, this in R&D center at Hyderabad is is it one of the biggest out of, outside Sweden for you? Yes, it is, and it's also so that uh, we've taken it to the next level. So the kind of uh, uh, technology level that we are developing in Hyderabad uh, that's fairly unique. We are working with the with concept we call it home markets. So of course Sweden, uh, Australia and some of the other major markets we consider it as home markets where we build up local R&D capabilities. But we are, we are also now aiming at making India our next home market. And that's why we are putting in this effort and investing heavily into R&D in, into India. Uh, Gone. thank you very much. Uh, you have a very, very long bidding war ahead of you uh, and all the best for that. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.